Okay, hey everyone, uh, I'm Gurgen and this is Ellen. We are going to present you the topic of student activism meets new technologies, going serverless with React Hooks and Context API. Before we begin, let me ask you some questions and uh, please raise your hand if you are working in the IT field. Okay, uh, so uh, please raise your hand if you are a software engineer. Raise your hand if you are uh, somehow related in uh, program management, product development. Okay. So uh, pl please uh, raise your hand if you are if you have worked professionally as a product owner or project manager. Okay. Please raise your hand if you have worked with React JS. Good. Uh, Please raise your hand if you've worked with uh, Context API and Hooks. Good. And uh, lastly, please raise your hand if you have worked with Firebase or any other serverless technologies. Okay, great. So let's start. Uh, our today's presentation is separated in two parts. Firstly, I will uh, represent and present you the product development, uh, product management part of uh, our community project. Uh, from our experience, we will share what works uh, to uh, make your development process as easy and as fast as it's possible. This is the outline uh, of our today's presentation from a fail to a solution from a community. Uh, our project, start, uh, project and experience started from uh, our personal experience, uh, and everything we're gonna share is based on that. Uh, 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 everything connected with product management and uh, the life cycle of product management uh, will be uh, specifically connected with small, uh, for small projects, uh, basically for community projects. So they are not, uh, maybe they will be not useful for other projects. So let me start from the life cycle of idea implementation uh, for a small community project. Uh, the whole uh, idea and uh, that uh, relies on our presentation is that fail fast. So uh, you will see during the presentation what we mean by that. So first step is personal experience. Uh, most products and uh, so community products, uh, mostly, are connected with your personal experience. You see, uh, we saw a problem, and our first step was to communicate it with each other and understand if it is a problem for personally me or personally Gurgen. Then uh, we understood that it is not. Uh, the plus of doing a project for a community is that you are in a community and uh, communicating and sharing your ideas and gaining feedback from your community is easy. Uh, so we started from our experience, then shared with our community members to understand the, uh, is it valid for others as well. Second uh, part is idea testing, uh, as also known as user interviews. We didn't uh, do it like so, so professionally with uh, templates and etc. Uh, mostly, we just talked to our community members to understand what problems, what pains they have. It is uh, really important uh, for uh, understanding uh, to do a project or not to do because uh, it is not something personal. You can you can write a code for your personal to do list, for example, but you cannot do it for a community because uh, if it is not uh, uh, useful for them, then it will not solve your own problem as well. So the third part is create something to show, also known as MVP, a minimum viable product. Uh, so I will go more into that part now. So we started from the idea. We saw that there is a problem and we need a solution for that problem. We saw also that it, it is uh, important for our community as well. So uh, we started from wireframes. Uh, for those who don't know what wireframe is, uh, uh, it is something uh, uh, visual to communicate with your team and with all stakeholders, uh, people who will be uh, affected uh, from your uh, pr product. In our case, it is our community members, other students, people like us. So we created wireframes for them to show and understand uh, 
our uh, how our uh, technical solutions will be uh, and features uh, will be a solution for them. Five frames can be something uh, drawn on the whiteboard or uh, using mockups. I will share some resources later. The next step, logical step, is creating UI UX on that on that five frames. But we skip this step uh, as uh, using React, we don't need to. Uh, uh, spend time on uh, design solutions. Uh, it takes resources, but as I said before, our goal is to create a product as fast as possible. Uh, so we skip this step because we have uh, design solutions for React Mat Material UI. You can use that. Ready solutions. So the third part is technical prototype. We need a technical prototype to, uh, under, we have a problem, we started to think about the solution, uh, we have that solution on wireframe, so the next step to understand uh, how the technical solutions are, uh, do they work or not. So that's why we uh, use technical prototype. Uh, it can be, it is not a, an MVP because you can uh, use uh, uh, many features uh, just to test and talk with students, understand what works, what not. So, uh, to uh, sum up, maybe, um, uh, this is the main steps. So first one is wireframes. Idea uh, goes to some visual representation. Then uh, we gain feedback from students from our community uh, and write user stories on them. Uh, for those who don't know what user stories are, they're basically tasks, but written in a special way, like stories. Then the next step is technical prototype, as I said. Uh, and uh, the, the following step is prioritize stories on the technical prototype. So we uh, got uh, feedback on uh, technical prototype, understood what features are uh, worth to uh, use in MVP, implement on MVP, so we do prioritiz prioritization and uh, development of uh, MVP, minimum viable product. So uh, I will uh, f finish my part uh, with sharing some tools. Uh, you can, uh, if you want to, you can uh, use uh, tools and uh, websites for uh, wireframes, but the Meek, uh, uh, Cloud, Mockups.com, they're free, you can, they're, they have free, um, uh, time to use, and for stories and uh, product management, project management, you can use Trello and Asana. Um, yeah, also people to follow on Twitter. They are mostly product people who are active on Twitter. You can uh, follow them as well. Uh, yeah, and the next part is the development part. Uh, the idea is also to. Uh, use as less resources as it is possible and do it as fast as it is possible. So Google will represent it. So, thanks. Okay. Uh, one second. So, uh, when you have an idea for an application or potentially a startup, it is critically important to ship as fast as possible. So instead of spending a lot of time and resources on creating a backend solution and uh, spend the time on deciding uh, what kind of API standardization to use or uh, spend time on redundant stuff like uh, authentication, we decided that it would be generally a good idea to go serverless. So uh, what is serverless? According to fullsackfirebase.com, serverless is just a collection of technologies. These technologies may include a single page application. This is your client side JavaScript code that provides graphical user interface and some interactions. A static file host that, uh, that can be used to serve your HTML, CSS, and JavaScript files. And a cloud-based database that your uh, client uh, application connects to. And optionally, you can also use cloud functions to perform some operations that is not secure or not reliable to do on the client side. Uh, our stack is pretty conventional. For a single page application, we use React.js, and we use a Netlify to uh, deploy our application, and Firebase to uh, store our cloud database and cloud functions. Uh, generally, as uh, uh, serverless solves, uh, kind of solves our problem with backend. It's not time to make decisions on the front-end side of things. And uh, for an application of this size and these specifications, it would be an overkill to use a popular state management library like Redux. 
So we decided for global state management to just stick with React's relatively new uh, context API. Uh, context API, according to React Docs, is uh, mostly needed when you have a global state that needs to be accessible to components on a different nesting levels. Uh, so such uh, example would be UI theme preference, for example, DAR theme, light theme, since uh, every, every component uh, probably needs that, and they are on different uh, nesting levels, do you need some kind of global state management for that? So what does con uh, context look like? This is a code that uh, provides us with a uh, React context. We are using React's create context function that gets a default value and returns a React context. This context has two main properties, one of which is the provider, uh, which can be used to uh, provide some values on the, uh, for the consumer components. You, you are passing a uh, value to the value prop, and then every children that consumes this provider will have these values. Uh, in order to use this, you have to wrap your uh, root component of the uh, consumer components in a provider, and then in the provider you would have access to this uh, provided values and can use it uh, independently. So if, if, you're, if you haven't worked with hooks, you probably saw some weird uh, examples like use context or use local storage. Hooks are the newest added feature to React.js library. Uh, okay. They provide with different uh, advantages. According to React's uh, documentation, they allow you to reuse stateful logic across different uh, components and not change your component hierarchy. They let you split one component into smaller functions based on their pieces that they are related, and they make it easier to reason about your code. Uh, if, you, if you work with JavaScript, you probably know that uh, classes aren't really classes, and this doesn't behave as this usually behaves in truly object-oriented uh, languages. And for starters, it might be really difficult to understand the concept of this and why are we using classes. So I think it uh, hooks uh, provide you the uh, additional features that uh, previous stateless components lacked. And now you can have all, all the things you had for classes, but now using functional components. So what do they look like? If you go back to our context example, uh, in order to use the uh, context, we had to uh, wrap our component in a consumer that is the uh, other property that I referred in creating context. So, but in, uh, in order not to uh, wrap your every single component, it was a, a community standard to just make an HOC, higher order component, that takes your component as an argument and returns a wrapped component that has the provided value from the context as a property. And in, in that case, you, you would have such situations with a lot of uh, HOCs. And in order to avoid this HOC hell, you can just use React use context. It is a method in the uh, React library that you are uh, passing the context created by react.createContext, and it returns all the values that the <coughs> provider is providing without the need of uh, wrapping your component. So it makes your code more readable and also makes your component tree uh, less nested. That's it. Yeah, uh, you probably uh, also seen uh, use local storage in our previous example. Uh, so uh, use context is one of the three basic hooks that React provides. Uh, the other two are use state and use effect. The uh, other uh, hooks are called custom or advanced hooks. These are the hooks that use the basic hooks to provide additional functionality. In this example, uh, use local storage is a hook that uses use state to store a value with uh, specified key in the browser's local storage. And there is also a function set value that sets the value. And as a convention, every uh, state management hook uh, returns an array that is consisted of a value and a function that changes this value. 
This hook was not uh, provided by the React team. It was created by the community. And uh, there is also a website called usehooks.com. And there are the daily updates on uh, many community uh, made hooks. So the, the resources, if you are interested in this type of technologies, Dev2 is a great uh, community that uh, they are talking about many different technologies. There is also a section for React. And there are different uh, blogs for <laughs> React and uh, Firebase and serverless. So now I want to do a demo. Uh, so we have this project, and uh, uh, the example that I brought, UI theme preference, dark and light theme, let's make this uh, with the context API and see what it looks like on implementing something like this on, uh, on your existing code base. So I have. Uh, you can uh, follow the uh, process if you want to. Uh, the project is also open source. We'll talk about it later. So uh, I have this context folder. Uh, I'm just going to name it a team context. We need React. <coughs> Create context. So I'm going to create the context and name it theme context. And uh, I'm going to give it light as a default value. Then we need to uh, create the provider uh, component. Uh, as you remember, theme context has a uh, uh, two main properties, provider and consumer. So we're going to use provider for now. <laughs> so we're going to take children from the props and just render them wrapped in a provider. And we uh, also need uh, to provide some values. Uh, in order to have some values, uh, we are going to use the custom hook I, I just mentioned, uh, the use local storage. So let's import it. This hook uh, returns an array of uh, value and the function that uh, changes, the, changes the value. We're going to name it uh, theme and set theme. And it is equal to use local storage. We're going to give it the key to store in the local storage. I'm going to name it theme and give light as the initial value. So uh, next, we are going to uh, provide these values. I'm going to make a new object and assign theme and set theme. So we can use, uh, use this later. OK. So to use this context, we need to wrap the root of our uh, consumer components in them. So let's go just the uh, root file in uh, index.js. Let's just import it. Import the provider. And just wrap our main component in that provider. OK, so now in the main, uh, every component uh, under this provider uh, in the component tree will have access to this context. So uh, let's just uh, go to the main. 
we need this theme to create dark and light mode. We are, as we said, we are using a uh, design system called Material UI, pretty popular. And it, uh, there is a, a MUI theme provider uh, that creates this theme, which are given properties. Let's modify this function to take theme as an argument and set the type of that uh, theme uh, with that argument. So in this case, whatever argument I pass to the theme, uh, it will change the theme. Now I can take the theme from uh, using the use context hook, we need to pass the theme context. Now theme is available to us and we can pass it to the function. Let's check where we are. So the application is working, the theme is light. If I change the uh, initial value to uh, dark. Okay, it will not change. <laughs> so, what we uh, what can we do? Uh, we need to create a component to toggle the state of the UI theme. So I have this uh, drawer. So let's under uh, under the drawer make a new component that toggles the theme. So this is the component that renders uh, everything. Let's make a, a new component and call it under everything is rendered. Actually, I have uh, already made it and I won't waste time on it. So uh, what it does, it gets theme and the uh, function that sets the theme from the context. Uh, and uh, whenever you are clicking that icon, uh, it, it's, it toggles the theme. If, if it was dark, it changed to light and vice versa. So let's uh, rename it to make it usable. And now we have theme toggling, which is not working. Okay, let's go to theme context. All right. Now it will work. Right. So there is dark mode and night mode, and it uh, refers to everything <laughs> on the application. So there you go, global state management with context and uh, uh, hooks API to do some custom work like integrating with uh, browser local storage. So a little bit about the project. So we talked about it, but you probably don't know what it is yet. Uh, we had a problem with uh, having not enough student voice in our community. And we had a problem with failing courses because of how the course was organized and uh, realized that uh, we don't have anything to moderate the course during the course itself. We only can appeal the grade or maybe talk to the dean after the course has already finished. And they usually say that it's already too late. And uh, so we made a platform you can uh, leave feedbacks, you can review courses, and most importantly, in Western uh, universities, you can take courses and you must, uh, you must uh, form clusters in order to graduate. There are different tracks, there are different levels of courses. We made a system and wanting to improve the system to uh, make personalized course suggestions for students based on the feedbacks and based on what they uh, want from the course, let's say less homeworks, more ex uh, more exams, or what type of teacher they want to uh, study with. And uh, that was the project. The project is open source. It's uh, it's on GitHub. 
there are a couple of issues. There are a lot of uh, lots of issues, but there are a couple in the GitHub project. Uh, if you want to help us uh, to uh, make this project uh, even faster, you can c contribute. You can take issues. There are labels. Good first issue. This will be uh, really helpful to uh, understand the code base and uh, help us. You can also, if you don't want to work uh, with the code base or you don't have experience, you can use issues, create issues to maybe suggest new features or uh, report some bugs. So that was the demo on the technical part. And uh, yeah, you can, uh, uh, this uh, we actually made uh, medium articles uh, for this talk, so they are more uh, detailed and uh, well-organized articles, both for technical part and the for, for the product part. You can uh, follow us on Medium, and you can, uh, as I said, check the project and help us any way you can. Thank you. <laughs> if you have questions, we have two minutes. Okay, we don't have two minutes. <laughs>